An engine requires both fuel and air in order to run. The carburetor mixes the fuel and air together so that they burn easily and then feeds this mixture to the combustion chamber of the engine. The carburetor does this by mixing the fuel with air so that it can easily be atomized. It also mixes the fuel and the air in the optimum proportions for the engine to run and determines how much of the fuel-air mixture the engine requires in order to run. Using this atomizing principle, the carburetor takes the fuel and turns it into a spray. Let's take a closer look at how it does this. When air is sent to one end of the horizontal tube, the pressure at the bottom of the tube in the water drops. The water is drawn up into the tube because of the difference between this pressure and the atmospheric pressure. This kind of pressure, which is lower than atmospheric pressure, is called negative pressure. Next, we'll take a tube with a narrowed section and run the same experiment again, using smoke and water. You can see here that the air flows faster at the part of the tube which is narrowed. Before entering the narrowed section, the flow of air is comparatively slow. At this point, the negative pressure is weak and the water is drawn only part way up the tube. As the air enters the narrow section, however, it moves faster. The negative pressure increases so that more water is drawn up into the tube. The flow of air now turns the water into a spray. We call this kind of tube a venturi tube. And the section where the tube is narrowed is the venturi. The carburetor uses this venturi to draw in fuel and turn it into a spray. When the piston moves downward during the engine intake process, air comes flowing into the cylinder. At this point, negative pressure is created at the venturi so that fuel is drawn into the carburetor, turned into a spray and mixed with the air. The carburetor has a very precise construction that lets it send just the right mixture of fuel and air to the engine under any driving condition. There are various types of carburetors used in motorcycles. The most popular of these is the VM type carburetor. Let's take a look at the basic construction of this type of carburetor. One of the main parts that make up the VM type carburetor is the main bore, along which air flows when it is taken into the carburetor. Another main component is the throttle valve, which controls the amount of fuel and air by changing the diameter of the main bore. A third is the float chamber, which keeps the fuel at a constant level. Other main parts of the carburetor are the jet needle, which determines the amount of fuel and air used the various types of jets and the passages in which they operate. The throttle valve is joined to the throttle grip by the throttle cable. As the grip is turned, the throttle valve moves up and down. At this point, the diameter of the main bore is changed by the throttle valve so that the venturi goes into action. The amount of air supplied to the engine is controlled by changing the position of the throttle valve. When the throttle valve is in its lowered position, less air is supplied to the engine. And when the throttle valve rises, the amount of air increases. The throttle valve is equipped with a tapered jet needle, which is positioned inside the needle jet. As the throttle valve moves up and down, 
The jet needle moves up and down with it. As the jet needle moves upwards, the passage through which the fuel moves gradually grows larger, increasing the amount of fuel drawn into the engine. Thus, in the VM-type carburetor, the up and down movements of the throttle valve and jet needle are what determine the amount of fuel-air mixture supplied to the engine. In actual driving, however, in order for the carburetor to handle a wide range of driving speeds, the passages through which fuel is delivered are divided into the starter system, the pilot system, and the main system. The system that supplies fuel-air mixture to the engine at low speed is called the pilot system. In this system, both fuel passages and air passages are provided, assuring that the fuel-air mixture can be supplied to the engine even when the throttle valve is mostly closed. When the engine is rotating at low speed, for example, when it is idling, air that comes in from the pilot air passage and fuel coming in from the pilot jet is mixed and sprayed out through the pilot outlet. It is then mixed with air that has passed through the throttle valve, creating the right mixture for the engine at low speed. The pilot jet measures the amount of fuel flowing to the engine during low speed rotation. The volume of air coming in through the pilot air passage can be adjusted by the air screw. Tightening the screw narrows the passage and reduces the amount of air coming in so that a richer air fuel mixture is produced. The passages that supply fuel to the engine at medium and high speeds make up what we call the main system. The main system also has two kinds of passages, those which carry fuel and those which carry air. When the throttle valve moves upward so that the needle jet passage is opened, the Venturi mixes the fuel coming in through the main jet and air coming in through the main air jet. This mixture is then sprayed from the needle jet. The amount of air mixed with the spray is determined by how far the throttle valve is open. Thus, the right mixture of air and fuel is supplied to the engine. The main jet measures the amount of fuel flowing to the engine at medium and high speeds. The main air jet measures the amount of air mixed with the fuel drawn into the carburetor. Each jet is stamped with a number indicating the size of the hole in it. A larger number indicates a larger hole diameter. At the tip of the needle there are five grooves. When the clip is lowered, the jet needle is pulled upwards so that the amount of fuel dispensed from the jet needle is increased and this produces a richer fuel-air mixture. The carburetor also involves a number of other elements and all of these various processes make it possible to supply the ideal fuel-air mixture to the engine to match the current driving conditions. For example, air bleeders are provided in both the main system and the pilot system at the point where the fuel and air intersect. These air bleeders help to turn the fuel-air mixture into a spray. Let's try an experiment to see exactly how the fuel is atomized into a spray. You know that if you make holes in a straw and breathe in, both water and bubbles are drawn up the straw together. If you make the holes bigger, the bubbles get bigger too.
Using this principle, we made several small holes in the side of the pilot jet, in the pilot system, and in the needle jet, in the main system. The air and fuel coming from the pilot air jet and the main air jet are mixed and bubbles are produced. This makes it easier to turn the mixture into a spray as it passes through the Venturi. In order to supply a stable mixture of fuel and air to the engine, the float section is designed to make sure that the level of fuel that has accumulated in the carburetor remains constant. The float section consists of a float suspended on the fuel inside the float chamber and a needle valve which is joined to the float and moves together with it. When the fuel flows into the float chamber, the float is suspended on the fuel. And when it reaches a certain level, the needle valve closes off the entrance to the chamber so that no more fuel can come in. When the fuel level drops, the float drops also, allowing the needle valve to open so that more fuel can flow into the chamber. As the engine rotates, the float carries out this action over and over keeping the float level at a specified position. This enables the amount of fuel sent to the Venturi and the pilot outlet to be kept stable. If the float level in the carburetor should happen to drop below the specified position, the volume of fuel propelled from the Venturi section decreases. If the float level is too high, however, the volume of fuel from the Venturi section increases and the engine is no longer supplied with the right mixture of fuel and air. When the engine is just being started and has not yet warmed up, it needs a richer mixture with less air in it. There has to be a way to bleed the air out and supply a richer mixture to the engine. This is done by the starter operation system, which temporarily increases the amount of fuel when the engine is started and shuts off the flow of air to make the fuel-air mixture richer. The starter system also has air and fuel passages and the starter valve is positioned at the point where these passages intersect. When the starter valve is opened and the engine started up, the negative pressure created by the engine draws fuel through the starter jet and into the carburetor. This fuel combines with that in the pilot system to supply a richer mixture to the engine. In addition to the manual system you see here, where the starter valve is opened and closed by hand, there is also a self-starter system. The self-starter has air and fuel passages just like those in the pilot system. In this system, however, a heating element and wax are provided over the starter valve. A simplified diagram of this system would look something like this. When the engine is cold, the wax is also cold, so the starter valve is pulled upwards and a rich fuel-air mixture is sent to the engine. The engine is then started up and the current produced by the generator begins to flow to the heater which gradually warms the wax so it begins to stretch. When this happens, the starter valve begins to shut off the passage little by little, decreasing the amount of fuel dispensed until finally only the fuel-air mixture from the pilot system is being supplied to the engine. Up to this point, we have been talking about the basic construction and action of the VM-type carburetor. Next, let's look at what happens in the carburetor under actual driving conditions.
When the engine is cold, the starter valve is activated to start the engine. If the throttle grip is opened at this point, it actually becomes harder to start the engine. This is because opening the throttle valve sharply reduces the amount of negative pressure generated by the engine, which results in less fuel being dispensed. It also allows a larger volume of air to be taken in, causing the fuel-air mixture to be leaner. Next, let's look at what happens to the carburetor when the engine is started and warmed up and reaches the idling speed. When the engine is idling, the amount of air determined by the air screw is mixed with the volume of fuel measured by the pilot jet and passes through the pilot outlet. At this point, the mixture is turned into a spray by the air coming under the throttle valve. Because of this, turning the air screw changes the amount of air taken into the pilot system and this changes the fuel-air ratio, which in turn changes the idling speed. Turning the throttle stop screw, on the other hand, causes the throttle valve to move up and down, and this changes the amount of fuel-air mixture sent to the engine, thus changing the engine speed. Therefore, both of these screws are turned to adjust the idling speed so that the right mixture of air and fuel can be obtained. If the throttle grip is turned a little to boost the speed from idling to the low speed range, the throttle valve is pulled upwards slightly. This causes the jet needle to be pulled upwards also so that fuel from the main system is added to that already coming in from the pilot system. At the same time, the amount of fuel-air mixture flowing to the engine increases and this boosts the engine speed. If the throttle grip is turned further, we reach the middle and high speed ranges and the throttle valve is pulled upwards even further. The negative pressure near the pilot outlet drops, so less fuel comes from the pilot system. More fuel comes from the main system, however, and more air from the main port, so that a large volume of fuel-air mixture reaches the engine, boosting the power.